Yo YouTube, it's your boy Barcode, I'm back with another video. We got some new content, so while everybody else is trying to think of teams to do this, I'm of course gonna focus on my Elite Only account, because after tweaking some gear, I was able to beat Queen of Tides Hell Stage 1, or Queen 13, whatever you want to call it. This is Elites Only, I'm gonna tell you some tips how, and really this is good tips for all of these new dungeons. But if you like this video and like my content, hit the sub button, hit the like button, Hit that bell dingy dingy thing so you know when I post a video. Let's go, baby. Alright, these new hell stages are ridiculous. In all of them, those giant ads are crazy. I'm talking about the ones in Wave 1 and Wave 2, where they just do huge damage and they can survive. I mean, you need endgame stats to clear them. So really the best way to go about it early is to bruiser it down. These new stages, they give higher rates of legendary gear. So we do want to farm them if you can. This is another debate where you want to see if farming hell stage 1 is going to be more optimal for you or doing speed runs of 12. Really the data will come. I just want to show you the team that I'm using on my elite only account. There's three big tips that I want to talk about. And this really goes for most of dungeons and the whole entirety of the game, honestly. Here is the team. Anna, Rodira, Veluk, and Roger, the turtle, my boy. Now, obviously, if you're not just using Elite only, and I just do not recommend that, there is different heroes to substitute for in this team comp. It really depends on your gear, depends on the heroes you have, depends how fast you want to clear it. But in Elites only, I'm kind of limited to what I have, right? First big tip, element advantage. This is huge in the entire game. I think this is one of my first videos that I've done for Awaken Chaos Era was talking about element advantage. And now with these hell modes out, I feel like we're starting a new game. So we're back to square one going these slow bruiser comps. So element advantage is key that mitigates as much damage as you can if you deflect. 50% of the incoming damage, that's huge. Tip number two, gear. You may have been farming Ash for a while, but now that I think about it, I'm going to be farming Queen a lot. Why is that barcode, you may ask? And that's in regards to my third tip, revival sets. Revival set is huge. This will obviously make your teams a lot slower when you can't run Cursed or whatever, or Avarice, whatever your team comp is. However, the extra heals are huge. And when you're under 50%, it's an extra tick and an extra heal. So I'm going to show you my gear on everybody. Now my gear is limited on this elite only account. So Anna right now, she's the only person that doesn't have revival set. And to me, that's okay because she has invincibility on her third or her ultimate, right? So this will mitigate some damage. And you build her with HP. She does more damage based off her HP. Those attacks can crit. I have her at 189 speed, 107 crit damage, 17k health. I kind of did that because of her speed, because I wanted to go first to be able to almost get the invincibility first before any damage goes off, or she has a chance to stun on her basic attack, which she's on cursed. Crowd control is super important. Stuns, taunts, whatever. That's why I use water prison spell as well to get an extra stun. And yeah, it gets rid of one buff from the queen, right? Rodira, she's our healer, right? But I actually have her on Revival Set as well. This keeps her alive. Veluk, we always know we want him on Curse, right? Nope, not for here because you need to survive. Revival Set, our man-child, our boy, Roger the Turtle, bringing Roger back from the dead. Revival Set, baby. 22k health, and you know what Roger does. Every time he gets hit, he reflects damage based off his HP back to the enemy. He's practically like a poisoner. He doesn't do as much damage as a poison, obviously. But this is every hit. And he also does true damage based off of his ultimate. He has a heal on his second skill, so does he need revival? Not technically. It just helps. I'd like to get him on an assassin set and see what his ultimate does after that. But now that Witch of the Wind is literally a joke, I can farm 12 now on my elites. That's another video. So I'm going to start it up, and I'll show you this 30 plus round run. Okay, the biggest thing about Hell Stage 1 is the waves. The boss is, a, it's not a joke, but it's its the same. 
It's you'll be able to beat the boss if you can get past the waves. The waves are the biggest thing, and that's why element advantage is so strong in these dungeons. Because I'm I'm not gonna talk about the wave phases too long because it's gonna lengthen out the video, but it's so strong because of how much damage they do. It's insane. I mean, look, they half health. Luckily, I deflected, or all my guys probably would have died. Not gonna lie. Uh, hopefully, I can get stun here. I get a cursed attack, so I was able to kill that, so he doesn't do another AoE. Uh, but yeah, element advantage. And even if you can build your wood heroes in a water dungeon on agility, I mean, once you get past the waves, uh, then the boss is pretty much the same. It's right elite and then the boss. So, um, you know, maybe uh, if I built like a Freya or something uh, for the heal block and then I could go straight for the boss. But I don't know. It's it's really going to be tough. Luckily, in the second wave, there's only one big ad and that helps tremendously. Uh, so, I mean, the little ads really don't do much at all. They do damage, but they don't do much at all. Um, so really it's just that big crab and then the two in the first wave that are really the problem. So once you get past that, it's fine. But I mean, with this team, you can even bring Charles in here as well, instead of Anna. Uh, I thought about that, but, uh, I'm out of charms and I wanted to put them on revival set. Uh, but taunts are huge. I have one from Roger. I have one from Anna. Uh, stuns are huge. I have the spell. Uh, I have Anna's first skill as well. Um, and revival sets are huge. Poisons, you got to bring the luck and even his focus down when we get to the boss uh, and I dodge a lot and that's because of the luck and his passive so that's huge as well all right so here we go right elite and the boss it's pretty much the same you've seen this guys a thousand times so do we really need to look into it I mean obviously my Roger my the luck they're not gonna die their own revival really the only thing is like if this would the fail uh, that would mean that the Luck and Anna both need to die. Roger wouldn't be able to put out enough damage by himself uh, to uh, eliminate Queen's shield. So I would get the round 50 and it would probably stall out. Anna dying is not a big deal. I still have the Luck for the poisons and I still have Roger. If the Luck somehow died, which he never will for Bible, um, it, that would be GG. Luckily, I have some good agility gear as well. This helps with the deflects like I was talking about. So this is really fun just to be able to do this in elites. I tried Queen uh, 14 or Hell Stage 2. Totally impossible right now. I mean, those two crabs. If I had some like AoE stun or something as an elite, uh, I may be able to do that. Um, I'm building someone right now. I uh, just six starred. Uh, I'll leave that for a different video as well for an elite um, that I was gonna try on a speed uh, switch team that was before which got nerfed, which is a joke now. So uh, of course, like two days after my goo bag video, right? But uh, I think I feel like there's like a checklist or something like when people find out a certain team comp, they're like, oh, they found that out now, which is good. Now we can nerf it. <laughs> <laughs> some stupid so uh but yeah i mean right a lad right ad's gonna die um uh, and now we're on the boss and it's gg so we're getting down to the nitty gritty we just about to hit round 30 right so it's a slow run is this worth farming over a speed queen 12 team and like hoping to get legendary gear i don't know i'll have to do like a times 10 and figure that out and, and talk about it in a different video but um i currently don't have time to do that right now so i want to get this video out uh, but yeah, I mean, it's, it works. It, it completely works. And depending on your team, I feel like revival set can be huge. Uh, and you know, think about it. You don't even really need a healer. Like, honestly, if you have bruisers, good heroes, epics, legendaries that like would work well with revival, do good damage, you know, do you need a healer? I mean, you could just do hacker and three damage bruisers and do revival or like a, a poisoner with revival. Yeah, you don't have cursed anymore, but 
you know, you survive and you win. And if you had Hakron with the defense trait and the HP buff, it's just going to be huge. So here we go. And I don't get a legendary six star piece for help stage 13. So really, is it? Is it worth Damage report, Veluk beasting, beasting with his poisons. Roger and Anna doing about the same. Our boy Roger the Turtle, 157,000. He put in some work just by sitting there and taking hits like a man. That's it for today's video. Just wanted to showcase Queen 13 elites only. You can sub in all types of heroes. Honestly, I feel like you could probably do it like full revival set on your whole team. Bring in Hakron. Bring in Santis, bring in D'Angelo if you got him, a wave clear or some CC stuns, whatever. Because once you get past the waves, it's GG. If you like this video, like my content, sub, like, ding a ding a bell. I'll see you in the next one. Peace.